How's it going, everyone? Welcome to this week's Q&A. So like any other week, if you want to chat and one of your questions being answered, make sure you drop a comment down below with your question. So uh, there is a uh, car in the background here. Obviously, it's not my car. So it is in accord with uh, just over 100,000 miles with a failed head gasket. Actually failed between cylinder one and two, two and three, and three and four. So uh, we went ahead. Uh, we removed the head. We resurfaced it very lightly, just enough to get it um, you know, nice and straight. And we uh, installed some Airline Pro head uh, studs as well. So uh, after this video, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. It's actually Monday morning. So uh, you'll be watching this video in just a few short hours. But I have a ton of stuff to do today. Yesterday, I was busy with the family stuff. So uh, here we are. So anyways, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the first question of the week. And it is, on modern day Hondas, is there a fuel filter? And uh, what is a good service interval to go ahead and change that filter? So um, back in the days uh, when I started working on these vehicles, most of the fuel filters were actually in the engine bay, uh, typically uh, held by a 14 millimeter or 17 millimeter um, inline flange uh, bolt or nut. And you would go ahead and remove those and replace it and whatnot, yada, yada, yada. Very simple. Some of them uh, were actually a pitta to get into, but a lot of them were uh, on the easier side to change. But anyways, fast forward to today. Yes, they still do have fuel filters. Now they are actually located in the uh, fuel pump assembly housing. So I have a picture up of what it actually looks like. Uh, just one example of what it is. And uh, if there's a chance that I get to uh, tear one apart and uh, break it apart for you guys, uh, so you guys can see what it actually looks like uh, one apart, uh, I'll go ahead and do that. Because uh, when you replace a certain part, uh, you can't you know, physically look at it. But when we go ahead and do these uh, fuel pump recalls that we're doing, a lot of the times, some dirty fluid does come out of there. Some dirty uh, fuel uh, comes out of there. So it, it is a good idea to go ahead and change it, especially if the car is modified and you've uh, had some other fuels in there other than just regular gasoline. So um, 100,000 miles or so, I would say it's probably a good interval. Now, this isn't an absolute needed item because a lot of people don't even know this even exists. And it is uh, quite expensive to go and uh, change about uh, $300 or so uh, plus labor and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, it really depends. If you have other things to prioritize, prioritize those first, uh, tie belts, spark plugs, uh, fluids, and stuff like that. Then go ahead and get to the filter if need be. But there is a filter about 100,000 miles or so. I would say it's a good time to go ahead and change it on, under normal circumstances. Now, if you've had contaminated uh, fuel, uh, the wrong fuel in there, uh, sometimes these gas stations put the wrong stuff in there, there's water, I know, whatever the, the case may be, um, then maybe you want to go ahead and change it at that time. But under, under normal circumstances, I would say right around 100,000 miles or so is a good interval. So hopefully answers the question for you. All right, so the next question is, is what are my thoughts on a new 2026 Honda Passer? So first of all, just from the previous Passport, I love that they actually made it its own unique look versus the Pilot, not just a chopped up Pilot. That seems like the previous generation just was an afterthought and just a quick fix just to get something out of there for that particular segment. So I do like that it has its own unique look. I also like that it has the 10-speed uh, transmission versus the old-speed 9 transmission, 9-speed uh, trans, which isn't a bad transmission, not what everybody makes it out to be. Uh, has a really bad repetition, but it's really not a horrible transmission. But anyways, uh, the 10-speed is a superior. It could be a little bit clunky, but overall, it is a Honda-built trans. Uh, and hopefully, you know, five, six years from now, we're still having the positive feedback that we are from them. As far as reliability goes, uh, we've seen a ton of modified Accords holding plenty of power uh, for these transmissions. My only concern would be, uh, again, that whole uh, trans and transfer case uh, splines area. So um, also has a new dual rack cam uh, setup. So uh, these have been so far uh, pretty reliable. Uh, just this week, we had one on a pilot. Uh, with the cylinder to misfire we uh, were on a phone with tech line um, and they instructed us to replace the head so we went to hit and ahead and did that and i mentioned a pilot because it's essentially the same engine so um you know there's also some uh, stuff going on with oil leaks uh just seems like something defective on the cast on that same side head uh the bank one head or the firewall side head so uh it seems like honda is aware of this and shouldn't be an issue going forward especially on a 2026 and a forward password so uh, we'll kind of see what happens. Um, so again, uh, it's still too early to tell. The powertrain should be reliable. Uh, my biggest concern would be that transfer case issue. Uh, so hopefully uh, that doesn't become a long-term issue going forward for all these vehicles with the 10 speeds, but uh, we'll see what happens there. I uh, haven't done my thorough research yet on that, uh, if there's any change between the Passport and the Pilot or whatnot. But 
We haven't seen anything on a pile yet, so hopefully we won't see anything on the Passport either. So if you're in the market for one, um, I think it's a good buy. I have a full uh, video on my initial thoughts on it. I'll link that in the description section down below. And once the one-year mark comes in, uh, we'll do an updated video on that as well, as well, of course. So, But overall, we haven't seen uh, too many issues with them at all uh, through the deal. So no news is good news. Uh, as I always say, if something does arise, then obviously I'll keep you guys updated. But uh, if, you go ahead, if you're wondering if you want to go and purchase one of these at this point, I would go and buy with confidence. Uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, it turns out to be as reliable as I think it will be. So hopefully it answers this question for you. All right, so the next question is, what are my thoughts on engine oil coolers? So uh, typically speaking, if you drive the car, uh, you know, just a normal commuter car, I don't think this is absolutely needed. Now, if you're pushing a car, if you take it to the track, if it's modified, it's probably not a bad idea, uh, assuming that you could, you know, put together a kit of some sort. So uh, number one killer of engines is going to be a lack of oil maintenance or a uh, lack of cooling of uh, engine oil, uh, coolant, and stuff like that, and fuel. So uh, obviously, if you're pushing a car, if you're racing it, if it's modified, probably not a horrible idea to at least start monitoring those temperatures. Now, if you're a normal commuter, I would say it's probably not needed in most cases, unless if uh, you know the car maybe uh, gets pushed with a lot of weight or something like that, or you live in an extremely hot uh, weather conditions all year round. Uh, then probably a uh, not a bad idea a, a, again if you could piece something together there's not many kits out there with the exception of like the the civic type r and the integra type s i don't even know if they have something for the type s but something could probably be implemented from the type r itself so uh just something to keep in mind here but in most cases i don't think it's going to be needed again uh, just to repeat myself unless if the car is modified and pushed heavily so hopefully answers this question all right so this next question is and i've answered this previously but it's been a while so uh, what are my thoughts on uh, oil catch cans? So uh, I'm usually against this. Now, Honda has a pretty good uh, PCV system, and it does a decent job of keeping everything, generally speaking, clean. It's not perfect, but it does a pretty decent job. Uh, more importantly, maintenance goes a long way in keeping that PCV system running a good and working as designed, along with good quality fuel. So uh, those are the two key factors. Now, if you want to go ahead and put one on your vehicle, then go right ahead and do it. I got no problems against it. Although, if it's a turbocharged vehicle, please be, uh, you know, do your research and be wise choosing your system uh, that you want to go ahead and use because a lot of times these things are breeding grounds for boost leaks. So, uh, most times we'll have one installed or somebody will install and they'll come to me like, my car just doesn't feel right, it's throwing codes, uh, it's not building the, the boost it should be building. And we go ahead and pressurize the system or we smoke it or we do a combination. And sure enough, there is a, usually a boost leak at one of the fittings, either at the catch can or uh, where the hoses connect to or whatnot. So just keep that in mind. Again, I don't have one on my car and that's for a reason because I don't want to have or create any issues that I don't have. I do proper maintenance. I use the proper fuel and I do push the car hard, but I'm keeping everything in mind when I have a manifold out. Uh, had just a little bit of carbon buildup on the valve, so nothing too crazy, uh, nothing like the older engines uh, had, some of these other manufacturers have. So just keep that in mind. When I take these um, um, intake manifolds off doing you know certain jobs, I always take a peek at the valves, and they're never surprising. Uh, the only times that there is extra buildup there is usually because the customer is neglecting the vehicle in uh, many different ways, but typically speaking, the oil changes. So uh, do your maintenance, and the car will treat you right. Uh, if you want to go ahead and add a catch can, go ahead. If the car is a turbocharged, so like many of the cars are nowadays, uh, just keep in mind that you could be causing yourself an extra issue that wasn't there initially. So hopefully that's this question for you. All right, and last but not least, question of the week. And once again, if you want one of your questions being answered, make sure you drop a comment down below. So dual overhead cam J-series engines. Uh, so you have them on the Pilot, you have them on the Passport, you have them on the TLX Type S and the MDX Type S, and most likely going forward on more applications. So uh, the question is, what are some concerns for oil leaks down the road? So uh, we recently, again, had one apart for a misfire. We went in head and uh, did the head. And it is extremely different from anything that we've worked on previously. So uh, it wasn't my vehicle. I was just assisting my coworker, and uh, we were both running together. So once we do like a second one, I'll do a more thorough video of everything taken apart and whatnot. But anyways, so uh, some thoughts for uh, concern of... Um, you know, potential oil leaks down the road. So one of them being is these uh, cam uh, plate uh, caps. 
so it uh, doesn't seem like the O-ring is actually sold separately, but you can see it here, and this is an O-ring here. Uh, and we have four of these. So these go over the camshaft that cover the bolt uh, for the cam uh, gear. So these go bolted onto the cam gear with two 10 millimeter bolts, and we have this O-ring. And we take that out to remove the uh, cam gear itself. Now we do have a VTC uh, setup, so it is um, you know lubricated and functions with oil. So I think these will definitely be uh, an issue and something to keep in mind. Now, now behind that you have a um, a camshaft seal. So uh, typically on the older J series, we never had an issue with them leaking. Now, if it comes to a point where we see that becoming an issue, uh, obviously we're going to be recommending those. Now to change those, you have to take these out. This has a 17 millimeter bolt behind it. You have to uh, break that loose, but in order to break that loose, you actually have to go behind the other side of the, the head and take out the plates there and hold it, uh, the camshaft, so you could break this loose and then torque it properly on the way back. So um, that's just sealing and stuff over there. So I don't see that being an issue. Although if you wanted to go ahead and change those um, you know, cam seals, you either have to take out the camshaft, which requires the removal of the uh, valve covers, or take out the cam end plate, which is probably the better option and replace the seal at the time. So uh, that's that. The part number for this is uh, right over here. So you have four of these, they're about uh, $19 each or so. So uh, if you're in there, this is gonna be an expensive job, requires special tools. Uh, please go ahead and change those. Those aren't too big of a deal. Although, um, you know, the camshaft seals, uh, we'll have to keep an eye on those and those are definitely a, a bigger issue and a bigger concern uh, to change. So um, as far as other leak goes, uh, it's still a J-series. We're still going to have oil pump uh, leaks, in my opinion. Again, still too early to tell. But I think if not at the first uh, time belt service interval, probably at the second, there will be leaking. Nine out of ten of them. We'll have to keep an eye on that. And as these vehicles get older, we also have the uh, rear main seal. I uh, haven't looked in thoroughly into that, but typically it's a rear main seal with a plate and an O-ring behind it as well. So we'll kind of have to see and keep an eye on those. But that would be my three concerns at this time of four if you add in those uh, camshaft uh, seals. So we'll have to see again how that plays out. But on the older a single cam J series, uh, those typically don't leak. So we don't even go ahead and change those in there. Uh, the oil pump stuff we go ahead and do at the time if need be. So uh, hopefully that answers the question for you and I'll catch everyone on the next one.